before we start, I want you guys to really appreciate how good this case looks. This is hands down the best case I've ever seen a handgun come in. Even the Wilson Combats that cost $3,000 came in like a little canvas bag. Beretta gives you a beautiful hard case that has a lock on it, integrated lock. I'm sure this case is even, you know, accepted to travel with on an airline, but this is a great looking case. Not many times I can actually just start a video saying, you know, admire the case, but here we go. You guys didn't come for the case. You guys came for a Beretta 92X performance. You got two latches up front, along with one that locks it in the center. We open it up and we find lots of different goodies. So we'll start with the boring stuff. You have some warnings, your paperwork, adjustment tools, manual, actually look at that. Instructions for your lock to set it up, mandated lock. A little warning, magazines, extra grip mag loader, and you have the pistol itself. Man, just look at this. <laughs> Jeez, all right, so let's get the necessary stuff out the way. Here we have a Beretta 92X Performance. And it is much of a step up from, you know, your regular M9 or 92FS and stuff like that. So I'm most likely going to miss something. I haven't shot this yet. Anything, just handle it a little bit. But I'm going to go through everything here and there, the features and how it's different. I owned a 92, I don't know if it was a 92FS or an M9. I forgot which. But I owned it for like less than three weeks. I eventually traded it. So this is my second ever Beretta here. So magazines, it takes your standard 92 FS magazines, only 15 rounds. And to start off, this is pretty, I'm gonna mark it as a negative one. They give you 15 round magazines. This is a full size handgun at minimum. They should come with 17 round mags. And they've been making these magazines for quite a long time. I think in the 80s, whenever they were adopted by the US military. Um, for the price of this gun, they go out with the case. There's no, I personally don't think there's any reason you shouldn't have five mags with this, something like that. Um, I don't even care if they throw in some surplus military mags in there. Um, they do give you a little bit of a thicker base plate with these, with the Beretta logo on the bottom. But yeah, it only comes with two mags. There are 17 round mags and 20 round mags. I think this should definitely come with at least five mags. Starting where the mag goes in, you have the frame cut uh, as a funnel for better reloading. So that is, helps with the guiding of the magazine and properly you have a little bit of a taper here, kind of get it at a good angle. You don't have to get straight in there. It's just gonna kind of guide the magazine in there for you. The machining on this strap on the grip right here is absolutely beautiful. And also the same on the back. It does come with two sets of grips. The other grips actually wrap around the back and you're not able to see this beautiful machine work, unfortunately. So switch to other grips. I'll let you see everything. It has an oversized magazine release. So this is a performance competition firearm. So you can get a nice big raise magazine release. It's out there. Make sure you hit it when you need it. Um, it's not an issue whatsoever accidentally hitting it as far as, you know, me just messing around with it. 
and it is reversible so you are able to switch this magazine from side to side going along the trigger guard i like the shape down here it is undercut right here i am a huge fan of squared off trigger guards i do wish it was squared off but they even cut under here under the dust cover the bottom rail so your finger is able to rest nicely under there that's a nice little feature right there the grips grips are nothing special at all plastic grips they don't give much to um actually aiding more so in grip nothing special kind of cheap on this gun and they don't look that great to me but you know serve their purpose i'm sure there's going to be aftermarket grips out there the controls all right so there's one thing i don't like i'll get to that in a second so here you have your safety most of your 92s, they had the frame, excuse me, they had the slide mounted safety, decocker, stuff like that. Here you actually have a slide frame, uh, frame mounted safety. So here, there's safe, fire. You can have it on safe in double or single action. Doesn't matter which one. When in safe, it does lock the slide. So you're not able to rack around anything like that when the slide is locked. Here, you have your slide stop. And if you guys can't see, these controls do protrude out a bit, even the takedown lever. So here you have your slide stop. Push it up, works normally as a slide stop. Further up, you have your takedown disassembly. To take it down, you press the little button right here. Um, you're pressing that on the other side and you just press this down and that's it. And then the slide is ready to come off. Very simple takedown. And I'll put it back on, slide it back on, and I'm just locking it back. Flip it back that way, release it, good to go. On the other side, uh, the only thing that's over here that's on the other side is the safety. So it does have an ambidextrous, ambidextrous safety little button to press to take it down. And they have the, I believe this is called the S-hook. I'ma read up some more to make sure I get it right before I tell you guys something wrong. But this is actually a little mechanism for the trigger. So when you pull the trigger, see right here, this has something to do with the adjustability of the trigger. And I'll show you guys more of that in a little while. Going to the back, you have a skeletonized hammer. Serrated so for some grip right there. And I'll talk about the trigger pull now. So it's a it's a nice trigger. Straight out the box. Definitely a nice trigger. So in your double action. Oh, well, first let me let you guys look at the trigger. It does have some serrations. And it's not perfectly flat. There's a little bit of a curvature at the edges. So for the trigger pull, it's not bad at all. Give your little play right there, build up, and eventually hit your wall. But on this, you are able to, you know, carry cock and lock, something like that. So you don't have all that pre-travel, over-travel, and heavier pull. So here, you hit a wall right there, press, and fire. Let's see that reset. Not a bad reset. Now let's fire it again. And the reset. All right, so before we go on to the slide and everything else, um, a negative about it, that I don't really like is these controls, especially the safety really gets in the way of actually holding the slide back here and racking it. So, you know, you might be taught to go over like this or some might just grip it like this. Any way you go, these controls right here really get in your way. So you will make full contact with the bottom of your hand right here if you go how, you know, you should do. Or even if you pinch it, 
these safeties right here are huge, they're massive, and they definitely get in the way. There's no, I don't have the biggest hands, they're not small by any means, but I don't think there's any way, it's, oh, just pinched myself, gotta watch out with that. Um, I don't think there's really any way for you to cleanly, really get a good grip without scraping across these controls right here. It's not the best. That all being said though, it is very easy to charge it from the front. So they call these, I believe, sawtooth serrations right here. Um, at the back here, it's not prime to um, pull the slide back, but up here, it's great. So the curvature of here, up here, how it scouts, um, not bad at all. And also you can go hand over up here. Not issue whatsoever. So even if you can't get a good grip back here, you do have an option up here and it's pretty easy. And what actually is a positive for it, if you guys don't know, if your hammer's down, it actually is a little bit harder to rack the slide for most handguns. But here, your hammer's down. I'm still easily able to push the slide back, get the hammer out the way, not an issue. So yeah, again, Back here, these controls, they're definitely in the way from a nice, clean, quick grasp. But up here, you got real estate. you got some geometry of the slide that really helps aid and still getting that slide back. So back down here for the rest of the frame, you have a 1913 rail at the bottom. You can accept all your accessories and everything. And again, I really do like the undercut right there. On the other side of the frame, you have your proof marks. This is made in Italy. So they do have to stamp it with some things. I'm not sure what all of it means. Your read before use. I have no idea why they say, or why it's necessary for it to say, fires without magazine on here, but it's something they put. And the slide. So I think this open top slide that exposes so much of the barrel is a great look, a very classic look. I think after the Glock in 1911, the 92 series is definitely the most iconic. On the slide, back here, you have some more proof marks. Let you guys get a good look at that. And further up on the slide you do too, or where did those go? And then you have your Logo made in Italy. So on the back, you have blacked out serrated slide uh, rear sights to reduce glare. Serrated back here, they are adjustable. It does come with a tool inside the box. As you can see, adjusted to go up, um, left and right. So it is adjustable for windage and elevation. You usually might just get windage on some sights, but on this one you get windage and elevation for it. There's a few other things I have to um, read up on to make sure I tell you guys what it is. But if you see right here on top of the slide, when you pull the trigger, that moves up. I gotta make sure I tell you what that is correctly. <laughs> Again, this is sawtooth serrations right here, 92X performance. They're headquartered in Maryland but they move their R&D and manufacturing for the US to Tennessee, actually. On the front, you have a red fiber optic. So you have a nice little classic look there, blacked out rear. And the fiber optic front. Get that to stay for you guys. There we go. Um, the barrel. Not much to say about a Beretta barrel, but I really like this. Excuse me, I just had a major sneezing fit for some reason. Uh, but the barrel, if you guys don't know, most, a majority of your modern day firearms are gonna be after a browning action, the tilt barrel. Uh, the 92 is one of the few and probably the most popular one other than the 1911 that has a different action than most other 
semi-auto handguns out there. And it really gives it a classic look. You see the barrel doesn't tilt up at all, unlike other firearms. And you can see in there, you have a nice full metal guide rod. So again, this is a competition handgun. And here, this is something new for the 92X. This is their Extreme S uh, trigger mechanism right here. So you're actually able to adjust this trigger, uh, the over travel and the reset and everything to do that. You have to take it down, press, flip down, and you're good to go. And if you guys can see right here, there's some holes there. You stick in a tool and you're actually able to adjust how the trigger operates there. I'm not gonna mess with it. I'm gonna shoot it first as is at the box and then I'll try to mess around with it, see if I can make it any better, stuff like that. But out of the box, um, it's great already. So I that I really need to mess with it. But it's there, and I'm definitely going to mess with it, though. And while we have the slide off, we'll just take a look at some of this beautiful Italian craftsmanship. So I have not taken out all um, disassembled a 19, excuse me, 92 in a while. So here's your one piece guide rod spring that goes over. And I think there's something funky about the barrel. There's like two parts to it. So yeah, I'm gonna try to keep this together. So as you can see, this is definitely not like the profile you see typical of your other handguns. I'm not gonna to try to explain the history and how it works. I'm just gonna let you guys look at it for now. But it's a nice, nice piece of metal. Man, this is a good looking handgun. And it is heavy. This is the heaviest handgun I've ever held. Uh, this thing is over three pounds, even without the magazine. And Beretta boasts that this handgun has a faster cycling time. So hopefully this is a real smooth shooter. The design, the fitment, and everything on top of the weight hopefully translates into one of the softest shooting firearms. Um, although... I have found out you do not need weight to have a soft shooting firearm, hence the Wilson Combats. Those are very light and they do not have a bunch of weight to it, but they are very, very soft shooting. I should not be doing this on camera. I don't know how. Oh, I might be all right, actually. <laughs> and let's get this back on. There we go. Go from the front, twist, and assembled. Man, that's a good looking gun. So as always, stay tuned for the actual review, the first shooting footage of it. Um, I'm gonna compare it to some other firearms. I have some more competition oriented stuff like this. Uh, so I'm gonna compare it against the Walther steel frame, the PPQ steel frame. I have the Polymer 80 builds, a 17L, and a Compensated 19. I'm going to see which ones show up, uh, turn out to be the softest shooting. Can it just be, you know, features and design, or is weight going to be the champion? And maybe weight and design, but we'll see. Um, in my review, I'm sure I missed some things that Beretta brought to the table to change this up from the other 92 series pistols. I'll make sure I know everything, go over that, and in review, tell you what I think about it, likes and dislikes, but overall, I am excited about this one. Great looking, great feeling firearm, beautiful design. Appreciate you guys watching.